One of my most anticipated games of 2014 had to be The Evil Within. Shinji Mikami, who hits it out of the park every time he directs a Resident Evil, was coming back to survival horror. This was going to be the game to show all the modern day horror games how to get it done. But it really turned out not to be that. Now, Evil Within isn't a terrible game. When it tries getting its spook on with some of its impressive environments, there's some alright moments here, but everything is underlined by a layer of unpolished ness especially when the game tries to throw in an action set piece or something like that the last fifth of the game is this uninteresting unending destroyed city level whose idea was it to put this bus chase sequence in this claustrophobic low resource horror game it just doesn't work this is all absolutely right in the awkward middle ground of action and horror that doesn't manage to pull off either to a high standard check out this lucky surviving foe over here he's like um yeah uh, congratulations you passed my test be gone now and and good luck on your many adventures. Most annoying, though, was the confusing, unfulfilling storyline. Now, don't get me wrong, a horror title having cryptic storytelling can sometimes help give the player a mystery to solve or help explore various interesting themes. But after you figure out what's going on in Evil Within after 12 hours of incoherent imagery, it doesn't amount to all that much. The only thing it really explores is the kind of cliched backstory of the villain, leaving the protagonists, the characters driving the story that you ideally want to identify with to see their survival through to the end, out in the cold with barely any real depth, charisma, or discernible goals to call their own throughout the main game. Sebastian Castellanos gets no arc in this title. He goes into Evil Within as a goalless, clueless numpty with not much personality, and he leaves the same way. So a few years later, there's a sequel coming out, and out of the corner of my ear, the few things I hear are, one, Shinji Mikami is not directing, and two, there's gonna be open world elements now, oh boy. Rather than it being a linear succession of challenges like the first. Immediately it's like, uh oh, here comes a series of red flags. No Mikami open world segments, they've got stilted Bethesda exposition conversations going down. This is gonna be worse than the first game. But actually... This game's badass, man. My interest in open world games has been relatively ruined over the years by empty terrain to traverse and repetitive cookie cutter objectives that pad the game out. So it didn't even occur to me that a horror game with this kind of setup could be pretty cool. But when you see it done right, it suddenly makes perfect sense. A condensed series of areas to explore and stumble through however you want and get spooked in. Don't be fooled by people who claim there's like just one main objective and one side quest on the side now and again. Sure, there's usually only one big marked side quest to do at a given time, but there's also loads of missable secret events to discover everywhere. As there should be, it's way scarier to stumble across something yourself and not know it's coming. Even boss monsters can show up in the open world, nemesis style. Side quests offer substantial rewards too, so you get to experience more story content and get badass permanent equipment in return. There's this optional bit where you go looking for these soldiers who may have supplies, and after tracking them down, you not only get to see more optional scenes, <laughs> but you get a radio that lets your radar show you other downed soldiers. And if you go investigate these corpses, usually there's a sort of little challenge or spook associated with them too. It's stuff like this that really gets you involved in exploring and building up your character who has a lot cooler and more interesting unlockable moves this time. I wanted to jump back into New Game Plus straight away and find anything I'd missed. Like, what kind of attempts do we usually get for open world style survival horror? Silent Hill, the downpour maybe? Also known as the most boring game ever made. What the hell, guys? I'm being chased by some fucked up, disturbing, spooky monster? Why isn't it a ball of energy or something? Come on, Tango, pack it in. You've embarrassed yourselves here. Silent Hill Downpour assumes that it's super scary to have your character be an incompetent buffoon, partaking in crap combat, getting pummeled left and right, but then takes any consequence out of enemy encounters anyway by letting you tank damage and avoid everyone to curb the inherent frustration that comes with this goddamn awful fighting. Evil Within 2, on the other hand, gives you satisfying kills, but makes combat encounters tough with truly deadly foes. Dealing with them is a sticky situation that requires careful planning, but winning is always satisfying. And what adds to that sense of excitement is a much better story this time around. Sebastian Castellanos is given a clear objective and relatable goal this time, and personal trouble he has to overcome to survive and save the day. 
He goes through a satisfying arc from drunken loser at the start to hero. You want to see him succeed. The game introduces a Resi 4 style series of villains to take down, and the horrible things you see them do begs you to kick their asses. Unlike the first game that feigned depth by telling a simple villain backstory in a confusing manner, Evil Within 2 hits the player with a satisfying and heartfelt message by the end, which elevates the title even further beyond just being an exhilarating horror game. Seb's character arc in this title is so good that it manages to address and give payoffs to elements from the first game, elevating the previous title thanks to the way prior events are addressed here. Even though I don't find the original that great, I almost recommend you play through anyway before 2, just to get the most out of how well this title calls back to it. Even the box art of this game has imagery you'll only understand a ways into the title, a tiny bit of foreshadowing clicking nicely into place, which is more than I can say for anything worth untangling in one. Also like Resi 4, it has a cheeky ass shooting gallery segment, with cheesy poses. You're the best around, detective. And nothing's ever gonna keep me down. This series finally has some charm and charisma to call its own, and I love it. It ain't a perfect ride, though some of the jankiness from the original is still present here. There's this absolutely baffling section where the game just decides it wants to be The Last of Us for 20 minutes, and it's just awful. You're put in this boring forest area, and it's like we're suddenly in a totally different game. This area ain't interesting or spooky. These Super Scroll zombies lose any chance of being scary here just out in a field like monsters in some teen-rated action game. Locking you in a room and having you fend off simple monsters for a while is a cheap trick the original relied on way too much, and it feels dumb to suddenly return to that in this segment. You're no longer navigating an interesting world using cunning to outsmart the enemies, spending the resources you found via hard work. You're running around in circles waiting for RNG to give you ammo drops to keep fighting because the title could be plausibly unbeatable if it didn't suddenly start drip feeding you resources. I can accept this maybe in a bombastic boss fight driven by an exciting emotional story moment or cool new enemy, but not here with this tedium. This is absolutely a step down when it comes to thoughtful horror gameplay. If Evil Within 1 is a 5 out of 10 for me, then Evil Within 2 is a super solid 8 out of 10, a great game that with some further polish could be a classic come its third entry if that happens. Here we have a good example of why not to assume we're going to get a new masterpiece just because a classic game dev is directing, but instead a solid indication of why to give New Blood a chance to shine too and deliver us some awesome new stuff. Thanks, John Johonas. You deserve a good long break for your efforts. Go rest our heroes. My good friend Hyperbit Hero is the one who recently recommended I finish this game after I played the first few chapters when it came out, and it was good advice. He has a full comprehensive comparison between the two games in the works that will no doubt be a cracking video and you should definitely watch out for it. Gaming YouTube is usually annoying the shit out of me one way or another, but nobody has ever displayed such good character and integrity when it comes to videos as Hyperbit Hero, always giving me solid and honest advice throughout my time here. For all your hard work throughout the years, Hyper, thank you. Okay, look, yeah, obviously he hasn't died. Sorry, I got a bit carried away there.